Hey gang, welcome back. Having a look at Night Drop 2. This is the Pegasus Bridge scenario. It's a uh, Laurent Clizier, I think. <coughs> Excuse me. Design. Uh, I think he's the uh, editor or oh, is that Olivier? It's Olivier that's the owner of uh, the magazine. But nevertheless, here we are. Battles Magazine game. Insert. Enjoy the sirens in the background here. This is an interesting little game, uh, and, and I quite liked it, uh, despite my uh, early misgivings about, you know, doing 65 die rolls to place all the units and work out who died. So that was just kind of grindy. But it's all good. Uh, we got to... Wow, that was very close. We got to turn eight, start of turn nine, and I called it here mainly because the 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 Brits, the Commonwealth forces, are in a spot of bother. I'm sure you all know about the Pegasus Bridge landings, and the uh, you know as part of the Normandy D-Day landings. So I'm going to assume that I don't have to give you all the history and background. So let's just say that we got a bunch of Japs landing and they're trying to capture key bridges and blow other bridges to slow down or prevent reinforcement onto the Normandy beaches. And this game tries to represent some of that with four night turns and uh, half a dozen or so uh, day turns. It represents the various sticks or platoons where, here's, some, here's a bunch of dead guys. Uh, you know, uh, sticks and platoons that come on to the land on the map in a somewhat random fashion. And then your job is to collect them all together in groups of three. So I can get these two chaps like this. Uh, three guys here. I would get a full platoon, a full company, I should say. Where did my counters go? Uh, uh, none of the, unfortunately, none of the Canadians actually made it onto the board. They all died. Uh, so they, they would get that. Now, if I was only able to get this, then I would get this, and then I'd have one spare dude running around, and there's various other combinations, but basically you either get a full, a full company or a partial company, and uh, the, they, there's no combat for these little sticks of units. They're, they're considered to be platoons of dudes, and when they are uh, confronted by hefty little German counters, they pretty much get wiped out straight away. So then you move into the game per se, where you're uh, attempting to move to capture these VP locations, which are unknown to the German player or destroy the black uh, starred locations, the bridges and things, and they're permanent VPs that you get to capture. Uh, so there's that as well. Now the combat, pretty straightforward little exercise of counting up the combat factors are on the attacker for the lead unit and the lead defensive unit and you get plus one for every additional unit that's uh, participating in that combat and then there's a terrain modifier and you roll a d6 each and then there are really only three results uh well four results so there's a draw nothing happens uh you have more than one or more than two or more than three than your opponent and that will either force you to take a step loss and uh, or retreat uh, all the way up to uh, take a step loss and retreat. So pretty straightforward, right? So it, it plays super quick. You alternate formations. You do, you know, you do your green dudes and you do your red dudes and well, you do your green, your blue. But you do you do that and the Germans get to move in between. And there's some, there's, it took a turn or two to work out really what the Germans should be doing because they're trying to cover all the bases at first. And then when you see where the the various companies are coalescing together, you have this opportunity to either A, attack them uh, and try and uh, eliminate them completely by moving through them before they turn into companies, or B, you can roll dice and see how many of them you can move uh, and, uh, and and prevent them from coalescing together into, into companies. So that's kind of a neat little mechanic. But once it gets to the daylight, then we're, then it's, uh, it's uh, all, uh, 
All cuteness is put aside and the Germans uh, move as fast as they can with as many units as they can to engage as many of the Brits and Commonwealth folk, folks as possible and clean up the house. And that's pretty much what happened. All of the Canadians uh, that land over here, I think that's where the Canadians were landing, basically get absolutely annihilated, uh, annihilated very quickly. The as part of working out the game, right? Working out how the the system works. Let me just try and zoom out here. I am zoomed out, okay. Uh, as part of working out the game, I spent a lot of effort keeping these guys separated so that it was harder for them to turn into companies. And then even when they did get together, they were unfortunate in that they were, either, they were looking down the barrel of uh, creating reduced companies uh, which would have been disadvantageous to them and not allow them to achieve what they needed to do because these guys were eliminated quickly we missed getting permanent vps up at the other end of the map number one and number two because they were taken out so quickly it allowed the forces that come in uh you know over here and over there to head down this way and so this is where we did a quick VP count and I got nine VPs for the allies. So, uh, you know, it ain't going to get any better. Uh, another turn from now, we're going to have uh, five factors, six, seven, eight factors attacking three with uh, three for defense, I think is going to be added there. Maybe two for defense, so that will be five. So the Germans are going to start out with a plus three on a 1d6 die roll each. They're probably going to force a retreat or a step loss here and lose this. And then it's just a matter of time before these two hexes go. Now, interestingly enough, the attacks down here in Benoville are extremely unlucky for the, the German uh, player. Let me just scoot the camera around this side so you can see a little bit better. I don't know if you can see that any better, but so the V. Uh, you know, I, I came in with a six and I was attacking a, a mere two, but this has a three defense, I think, or maybe it's a two defense. I think that also has a two. Yeah, it's a two. So that's a four, net four versus six. These guys started out with a plus two, but rolled really badly twice. First time was a draw. Second time they lost a step. We piled in with this guy. By that time, an additional uh, two uh, companies had uh, formed over here and uh, the bridge was secured. So there's four VPs that I think I can keep. <laughs> um, you know, we're going to lose these. Uh, we're going to lose these hexes as well. So it's just not good. Over here, we spent a lot of time screening and fighting here to see if we could get down to the, the bridge all the way down the other end of that, across that causeway through the swamp and marsh to no avail, uh, when probably I should have focused on the, the Merville battery here, which has a strong defense. That's a three plus a three is six. So you got to get uh, two companies in there, four plus uh, one and one is, si is six, just to get even chance of attacking i did it i got uh you know i was at a minus one uh detriment here and rolled a a, a draw and then a a retreat tw or two retreats could not force the issue then these guys turned up and that makes it kind of a, a lost cause so what happens with the game what 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 do i think of the game well i told you i, I quite liked it so there's that you're in the I guess you're in the role, I would call this, of the kind of like the regimental commander overlooking the whole situation. And then the, for the Germans, you've kind of got your hodgepodge of uh, units and little calf groups all over the place trying to race to the defense. Uh, the, the lack of information here is nice because we don't know what all these little sticks are. We don't know uh, there's hidden information for the Germans as well. There are you know, counters that go on top of some of the garrison forces. So that's a random draw. VPs are put down randomly. So there's lots of unknown stuff. Now, as a solo player, you're probably not getting a lot of advantage out of that, but it is nice and it adds replay value 
when you have this uh, this uh, variable variable VP allocation. And in fact, let's see what the VPs are. Yeah, three is the highest, and then one and two, and I think there might even be a zero here somewhere. I think this guy was a zero. No, he was a two. So. Um, there's that. I think so. There's a, that builds in some good replay value. It might, for some folks, mean that you're not as comfortable playing uh, solo uh, for whatever that's worth. I think it plays solo fine, but then I think most games play solo fine uh, unless there's hidden plotted movement, basically. Uh, so decision space, lots of uh, lots of little nuancey, gamey things. I think that c can go on here and gamey in a good way. In that you're, I don't know, you're, uh, you know, you're, you're, you're trying to plan where all these little dudes go to uh, collect together and form companies, but at the same token, you don't know how many platoons or HQs or leaders there are, and so it's all a bit of a punt, really. You're trying to work out what what should be happening, and and hope for the best in the dark. Uh, so there's. Uh, decision the decision making at that level is pretty interesting the germans i, I had a hard time with the germans at, at the first couple of turns working out who could move who couldn't move i'll say generally speaking with the battles magazine games i don't like the rule book format i don't I, i'd rather pay just a little bit more for the regular sized page a4 us sized paper so that uh, I don't have this tiny, this tiny format rule book. It, to me, it, it's just kind of annoying. Let me just say that. Uh, there's a few wording things in here that are a little unclear, and I, I did spend a little bit of time flipping backwards and forwards, but once you work it all out, it ain't hard. There's a couple of summaries in the game that uh, are very useful. The Ezoc's, uh, Ezoc effects summary. Uh, interestingly enough, the combat results, which you heard me re recount earlier on, are uh, just listed in the rules on page 9, uh, top of the column, just one little reference to it, you know, right here, that's your CRT. Uh, so, so, that, so the format, besides the format and some of the rules wording, I, I'm happy enough with it. I, I like the artwork on the map. It, uh, it's got a lot of different shades of green here and tries to represent that verdant kind of uh, French terrain and the marshes and the rivers and things. So it's all, that's all very nice. The order of battle, there is absolutely zero granularity uh, in the order of battle. It's all kind of an abstracted feel. If these are really platoons, uh, we don't know how big these formations are, but they can just waltz over these guys and knock them out with really out any combat. And we don't know uh, which which guys were really the Canadians and where they were and the Brits and uh, whoever else was involved. Uh, we don't have that sort of OB, that level of OB. There's no mortars or there's no uh, air support during the day or anything like that. Uh, the Germans are just a bunch of guys who were here and there's some tank and scout car units of some scale. Uh, so it's representative as opposed to accurate. So if you want a granular OB, this ain't your game. No logistics to really matter about. I think I've talked enough about conflict resolution and the sequence of play works pretty uh, smoothly and easily. I think this gives you the historical narrative pretty nicely. It's a chaotic uh, opening game for both sides. No one knows what the hell's going on or where anything is or who's who. Who is who? Uh, so that is nice and uh, and reflects the the challenges that were presented to both sides. Um, probably a high replay value. And if you wanted to buy this game, just, uh, you know, you're not interested in Battles Magazine for whatever reason, I think you've probably got some decent value here in terms of gameplay, unit quality, production finish. Uh, like I said, be, excuse me, it'd be nice if I could get to uh, a, um, you know, a larger rules format, but that's just me. All right. Uh, e easy enough to consume, fun to play. 
probably well worth the money I'd say in general. And I, I found the, uh, the component quality, as I said, is good. I think the, the, they've changed their printer because I think these are a little bit thinner than I recall some of the other games being, but then I might be confusing them with Nuts Publishing games, which had very thick counters. So there is that. All right. Uh, I'm just looking at these guys with the bagpipes. I'm wondering why I didn't get to use those. Hopefully I didn't miss a rule like these little dudes here with the bagpipes. That's cool. So that might have just thrown my whole uh, my whole commentary out the window because I've, I've missed something uh, significant. But who knows? All right. There you go. Fun times. Talk to you soon. Night Drop 2, Pegasus Bridge, Bells Magazine number 12 or 13-ish. And uh, you're off to the races. Have a good one.